Okay. So we are in the mid of the quarter. Now we are going to start the spatial theory of relativity, uh, dynamics of the charged particles under the electric and magnetic fields and the dynamics of the electromagnetic fields we will study and we will investigate at the end of the semester uh, radiation from the accelerated charges. So I will start the spatial theory of relativity uh, from the simplest case from the uh, undergraduate level as a first R. I want to quickly and simply uh, show you the what is the Lorentz transformation and what is needed, what the people try to find this transformation and so what the people thought historically. So the station in the 19th century people were, scientists were thinking that the light is propagating under the ether, like a sound, a sound waves in the wind. So if you think about the sound waves, if, if there's a wind, and if the wind is behind from me, if I shout you, you can hear the, my sound more easily. But the, if the wind against to me, if I shout, uh, you cannot hear, maybe you can hear less. So you need a medium to travel the sound waves. And basically they are longitudinal waves, pressure waves. So in the 19th century, scientists were thinking that the light is propagating in the medium is called ether. And that medium, let's say we have the sun, and Earth, let's say the Earth is propagating uh, through the Sun, and let's say this is spring, and this is fall, different seasons, and from the Sun, the light was thought as a propagating under the Sun medium, which is called a uh, some kind of ether. The medium enables the light propagate. So the problem here, only transformation at those days known as a Galileo transformation. So and Newton used the Galilean transformation. In different medium, different reference frames, you can observe the observe the source different velocities. Suppose that we have two frames moving <coughs> relative to each other V and let's say this is observed in the K frame and this is observed at k prime frame. So you can write that uh, by using the vectorial addition, x is equal to x prime plus vt. So these kinds of transformations they have. So according to this transformation and the idea of the ether, the light speed should be different during the different seasons because sometimes Earth is moving towards the sun, sometimes move out from the sun. So at the end of the century, <coughs> so Michelson and Morley make a series observations of the light and he has uh, some interference design of the experiment so basically light is coming here there's a beam splitter 
So some of the light is reflected here, some of them may be reflected here, back and forward, and they are collected somewhere here. Basically, they were, he is investigating the interference and diffraction patterns. So if the speed of light is changing in the seasons, he was thinking that to see some shift in the interference or diffraction pattern from the light, but he didn't see. And at those days, two scientists was working on the difficulty of the Galileon transformations, trying to put a new kind of transformations. The names are the Lorentz and Poincaré. They were difficulty explaining the Maxwell's equations under the Galilean transformation. So, but we understand basically from the Maxwell's equations, uh, wave equations. So if you combine it, you obtain a wave equations. Under the Galilean transformation, these uh, Maxwell's equations was changing. So they had a difficulty understanding the Maxwell's equations. On the other hand, Newton's equations doesn't change under the Galilean transformations. So Michelson and Morley experiments, set of experiments, uh, implied that the speed of light is constant in all frames. And Lorentz and Poincaré sets of put uh, some series of uh, theoretical work to understand that the, why, the, why the Maxwell's equations are changing under the Galilean transformations. But they all thought that there's an ether. So Einstein pick up the words of the Lorentz and Poincaré related with the spatial theory of relativity. And using the Michelson and Morley experiment, C is constant in all frames, 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second, in all inertial frames actually, and propose two postulates. One postulate, similar to the Lorentz and Poincaré, in all inertial frames, means that the velocity and the velocity is the same, the rules of the physics should be the same. Like here, like in the airplane, in the satellite, whatever, whatever you think is uh, practically close to the inertial frame, the laws of the physics should be the same. One postulate inertial frames and laws of the physics. The other postulate, C is constant in all frames. So his theory gets rid of the all ether and says that the physics rules is the same in all frames and the speed of light is the same, C everywhere and use the Lorentz and Poincaré works and, and published the uh, result in 1905 when he was 26 years old. And that was special to of relativity. Now, then he said that this theory not, is applied not only Maxwell, equations, it uh, applies to the quantum mechanics, Schrodinger equations, and, and so on. So, and people since then use this uh, special theory of relativity. Ten years or eleven years after that, he put the theory of the general relativity when he was 37 years old. So basically, first I will drive the quickly Lorentz transformations, and I, I will investigate that uh, uh, what, uh, what we can do 
uh, using Lorentz transformations and assuming that the, not assuming that the, the speed of light is constant everywhere, tells about information about the relativistic Doppler shift, time dilation, and so on. So we will today and next week we will investigate the uh, properties of the spatial theory of relativity. But the point we will come will be the what? Maxwell's equations are covariant in forms, doesn't change in forms, in inertial frames, in inertial frames. Now, now I'll try to derive the Lorentz transformations as possible as quick and as simple as possible. So basically, idea is the following. Oh, one of the things in Newtonian mechanics, time in the different coordinates are the same. But when you set up the Einstein postulates, physics is the same all inertial frames, and the speed of light is the same in all frames. That puts that the time is not the same in or uh, in every coordinate system, time is different and time is a coordinate also. That is very important. In low velocities, in Newtonian mechanics, time is the same everywhere, every frame we use. But in the, if when we go to the higher speeds, time is a coordinate and different in different uh, um, coordinate systems. So basically, what the Einstein's rule says that C square T square minus x square y square plus z square is equal to zero in one frame. Actually, if you take this to the other side, that is simply expansion of the wave. x square y square z square is equal to c square t square. So the expansion of the wave in one frame. Let's say this frame x y and z. So suppose that this is the expansion of the wave. So <coughs> the wave is expanded with the speed of light in that frame. Therefore, c times t square, c square, t square is equal to x square plus y square, z square. If you look at this wave front in the different frame, everything will be the different, <coughs> time will be different, uh, position will be different, but what is the same? Speed of light will be the same. So basically in different frame, we will have x prime square, y prime square, z prime square, with minus, uh, minus of this times the c square, t prime <coughs> square are equal to zero. Actually, they are equal to each other. So let me write once more. It is worth c square t prime square minus x prime square y prime square z prime square is equal to c square t square minus x square plus y square plus z square. They have to be the same. If you find that the transformation satisfying this rule this will be the Lorentz transformations. I would write the Lorentz transformation easily, but in order to feel and remember what you have done in the undergraduate, I will quickly try to uh, derive. But I will derive using a geometry. One of the important things in the spatial theory of relativity, what is uh, occur at the same time, simultaneity. Suppose that you have a train. Train moves with, in one dimension with velocity v. And you have a uh, tree observer. Left, middle, and right. So they are separated by a unit one, one meter or one 
stick or whatever you call. If you send a light from left and right, the observer too will receive. If they send a light at some time and it will receive another time, but if they if the second observer sees the both lights at the same time with his clock, we can call that one and third and this one are simultaneous. Okay? But if you have an observer here, and if you say that uh, I will observe that the light will reach us to the point two, you should arrange the clock again because train is moving. So with respect to this train, something occurs simultaneously, doesn't occur simultaneously in the other frame. Because while this light is propagating, train is moved, this displays a little bit by let's say some delta x. Therefore, this observer should emit the light a little bit later, according to this observer. Okay? With respect to the train, something simultaneous. With respect to the ground observer, that something is not simultaneous. So, if you relate that the relativity and simultaneity, you can say that in one inertial frame, something is simultaneous. In other inertial frame, that is not simultaneous. Now, let us try to investigate this thought experiment and try to put a condition for the simultaneity. So, this is one dimensional. This is three dimensional, actually four dimensional. Time is a coordinate there. So I will just use the geometry. Let's say this is x, this is t. So left observer moves with x equal to vt. When time goes on, you can calculate the x. Middle observer, it is away from the left observer, one unit meter, or one unit distance, and it moves with the same velocity. Therefore, these two lines are parallel to each other. So this is one unit, and it is x, is equal to vt plus 1. This is the first observer, second one, and the third one moves away from the two unit meter parallel to the both of them. That is x vt plus 2. So how can we achieve the simultaneity condition of this observer using this? This is very simple. I know that x is equal to ct. So if I call that the c, I will call that the c as a 1 until the end of the calculation, and then I will put the units later. c is 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. And we cannot plot here. I will take the C as unit. If the observer here sent a signal with the speed of light, light, light signal to the middle, in this diagram, it will go, what? With 45 degree slope, because x equal to t. So basically, This line, oh, I shouldn't, 
So let's say x equal to t line will be that. So this line, this light goes to this point. Okay, this will receive because the curve of this motion of the middle one is this, and the light signal is goes like this with a 45 degree. And if you want to make the observer simultaneously to the receiving of this light to the middle, receiving of this light to the middle, the observer here should send a light backward. At which angle it will propagate in the XT curve? Again, 45 degree, but in opposite. Okay? So basically, somewhere here, the observer will send a signal. This is 45 degree. And with vertical, this is 45 degree. And the observer will see here. And at that point, all clocks will be here simultaneously synchronized with respect to the ground observer. And this little difference is the waiting time of this uh, right observer. Okay? So I couldn't plot this well. So let us play and find the B. Let's say B and let's say this is A. So basically, let us equate the, this line equation and that line equation, very simple. One of them, x equal to t this one. The other one, what is this? x equal to v t plus 1. c is 1. Okay, I will put the units later on. So, if you take the t here, plug here, then you will obtain what? Uh, take the v t other side, and then you will have t 1 minus v And that t will be 1 over 1 minus v. So if you want to put the unit at any time, that is very simple. 1 is unitless, v is, has a unit, divide to the c, make the unitless. So you can do it at any time. Don't worry about this. So if you equate these things, you will find that the location of t a if you create these two lines. Okay, that is TA. And you know that the TA is equal to XA. That is one minus V. If you want to make the units, you should multiply the what? This T or divide this C. Multiply by C or divide by C. You can arrange the units at any time if you want it. Now let us look at the, what we are trying to find. We are trying to find the uh, point B. So what is this line? This line is nothing but x equal to minus t plus some constant. So that goes to the other side, x plus t. And c, what is the c? What is the c? So this line intersects with the, this one. You know that the when t is equal to ta, x should be xa. Therefore, C should be what? C should be XA plus TA. This all. Okay, so this is a minus 45 degree slope. 
And you know that the, when t is equal to a, x equal to a, so basically this constant should be what? When t equal to a, x should be a. So this is the line describing this. And at the intersection point, middle line has the value x minus v t, v t plus 1 and the left line has the what? x equal to v t plus 2. So x equal to v t plus 2. So when the light is emitted here, it will intersect with that point and we are looking to find that point and this point has a motion uh, equation is x equal to vt plus 2. And let us uh, play these two equations. So let me write this again. So you can take this to the other side. That will be x minus vt plus 2. So take the vt other side. And here what you have, xa plus ta, so that is nothing but x plus t is equal to xa plus ta. What is the xa plus ta? Two times of this, okay, is equal to two times one minus one over v. And subtract these two, x will be cancelled, so you will get what? t is equal to 1 plus v, 2 over 1 minus v, minus 2. So multiply 1 minus v, divide by 1 minus v, and that will be 2v, 1 minus v. So from here, you will show that the t is 2v, 1 minus v square. Is that right? 1 minus v uh, divided by 1 minus v. <coughs> Truths will be cancelled. Yes, <coughs> that is okay. This time is the time of this tb. So I find that the value of the TB, I will calculate the value of the uh, XB, that is simple. So XB plus TB is equal to what uh, xp plus tb so actually what i said that x plus t is equal to 2 over 1 minus v and if you put the tb here that will be xp and xp from here is equal to uh, but 2 over 1 minus v minus tb and instead of tb write 2v 1 minus v square and multiply this 1 plus v and that will be 2 1 plus v minus 2v 1 minus v square. That will be the location of xp. So 2v and v will be cancelled and xp will be 1 minus 1 over v square.
So basically, I know that the TB. Now I calculate that the I calculated that the XB two over minus one minus V square. So the coordinate of this is synchronized to all of them with respect to the ground observer. Now, what information we obtain from here? The information is simply the relation between the XB and TB. If you take the ratio of the XB and TB, what you are going to obtain? XB over TB will be what? If you take the x divided by tb, everything will be left, cancel, and you will get 1 over v. And basically, tb is equal to xb times v. So from this two. Now, basically, that means that you can do this for different points, and that is okay for all points. This line is equal to t x t is equal to x times v, and here that the values t v is equal to x b v. And one another thing, if you call this angle some alpha, that angle is the same here. That is the line xvt, that is the line txv. So, is it dimension Don't worry about the dimension. If you want the dimension, Arrange the dimension, how you can do? This is time, this is something, okay. So if you divide this to the C, this becomes dimensionless. If you divide this to the C, this becomes what? X over C, it becomes time. So if you divide to the C squared, the same dimension you can restore. We will do this later, okay. So C is one, but you can put the C such that arrange the dimensions at any time, okay. If you put the dimension, this should be divided by c square. Don't worry about this. Now, so this line is synchronized, and that is the x equal to vt, and you can say the following. So if you make a some measurement here, let's say here, what is the x value? Let's say this is, if you want to measure this, what is this value? x minus vt is equal to x prime. So this length, what is this length? If this length is x, if this length is x, because this is x, this should be, or that should be what? x prime. And x prime is equal to what? x minus vt prime. So in general, you can write that the x prime is equal to x minus vt. And if you look at the same point here in vertical, time from here is equal to what? t prime. This length is t prime with respect to the synchronized line, t prime is equal to what? t minus xv. This part is important. t prime is equal to t minus xv or vx. So do you agree? But that could be not correct that could be a function of something. That could be dilate, contract, that could be anything. Okay, let us apply, multiply some factor. 
Okay, that factor will be one. But let us multiply. So what we do, we use that the one principle of the relativity, what is it? Actually two, speed of light is constant in the same frames. And uh, in one frame, something is simultaneous, but in the other frame is not simultaneous. But doing this job, we make the simultaneous, okay? According to here, it is not simultaneous, but here it is simultaneous. So, so I am putting this uh, by hand. That could be one. Now, according to Einstein, speed of light is constant in all frames. This is one dimensional. X should be T, X prime should be T prime in all frames, okay? So if you put here x prime, you can put as what? t prime, for example. What can you do more? Instead of x, you can put t. OK. Instead of t, you can put x. This is the Einstein's rule. Speed of light is constant in both frames. So if you put instead of x prime, t prime, x prime, t prime, this is that. Instead of x, put t, this is that. Instead of t, put x, this is that. As you see that, if you put this, you will obtain the below. That means that whatever the f and g, they are the same. OK? Do you agree? This is the Einstein connection here. So this is the Einstein connection here. So instead of G right F or whatever, there is one more rule we are seeking. In Galilean relativity, X is equal to X prime VT or X prime is equal to what? X minus VT. What is change? If you change the prime and unprime, velocity will be changed. So do the same thing here. Do the same thing here. Change the coordinates. Suppose that you look the frame differently. So not, not here, somewhere else. So change the frames. So if you change the frames, make prime and unprime. X prime will be X. X will be X prime. The important thing, what will be the minus V? If you change the coordinates, plus v. plus v, that should be plus v. Plus v, t, f v, and this should be t, t, t prime plus v x, f of v. No, I am doing strong. So this should be x, x, x prime v t prime. This should be t t prime, uh, x prime. Change the primes and unprimes, make the velocity <coughs> inverse. Okay, you reverse everything. And try to find the, this stuff. So let us try to find that one. You should change the arguments of the f You should change the arguments of the f too. What? You should change the arguments of f too. Yes, yes, yes. You then you say that you are right. Let's say this is even function. Okay, let's say something even function. You are right. Good. Thank you. <coughs> what I am going to do? So I am trying to find what is f square. x is equal to x prime. What is x prime? x minus vt. x, what I am doing? x is equal to x prime is there, minus vt, times f. And then what I have, v, what is t prime? t prime is t minus vx, f. And everything will be multiplied by f. So let me write this. This is confusing. So x is equal to 
x prime uh, x x prime f and what is this v t prime t prime f and everything is x multiplied by f okay i think i did correct i will solve the f I erased this part, but you already right? Okay. So I will solve this very easily. So uh, x is equal to, so let me do by quickly multiply, but maybe you saw already the result. Do you, did you see that, what is f? Maybe you saw already f square plus uh, vt minus vx f square. Did I do correctly f square? f square is over there. That should be cancellation. Which terms cancel? So minus vt. Which terms? Oh, well, this will be cancelled. And you are left with x, x times one minus v square. X minus x, x, x times this is x, f square. Thank you, x square minus minus v square, x, f square. Okay. So thank you. So x will be cancelled, and if you solve the f, f is square root of <laughs> 1 minus v square. Okay? So we use that the uh, simultaneity of relativity, we use that the speed of light is the same all frames, and we use that the, when we change the coordinates, only velocity will switch the sign, we find the f. Now we can write the full result. x prime, I said uh, x minus vt, but I find that the times f, and f is uh, 1 over square root of 1 minus v square. And if you look at the t prime, t prime is was t minus vx times f and f is 1 minus v square. So we find a rule for the transformation in one dimension. And we have to restore to the dimensions. So this is v square, this is 1, therefore this should be c square. <coughs> and this is okay. And your question there, this is not in the same unit, divide to the C square. So this is the uh, Lorentz transformation. Okay, so there are many ways to derive this. This is the Lorentz transformation using the just geometry and simultaneity. Before going to break, I want to show, summarize the whole concept. Uh, so what kind of transformation? Let me define again. You know so far, if you have x and y, not time, x and y ordinary, the rotation. So if you have a point here, if you rotate this by angle x prime and y prime, the property is what? In both frames, 
that will be the same. What is the relation? So if you have a point in the xy, forget the Lorentz transformation, anything. If you have a one point here, if you rotate the system, what will be conserved? This length will be conserved, and it is equal to x square plus y square is equal to x prime square y prime square. But here, this is the rotation of the coordinates. But here, that is something different. If you have a x and time coordinates, and if you make a rotation, if you make a Lorentz transformation, the situation is the following. 45 degree is equal to xt. If you make a Lorentz transformation, if you have an event here, and if this is the length, what will happen if you make a Lorentz transformation, the new coordinate system will be t prime, not that rotation, and this should be the x prime. And you can look at the same point, different coordinates. And the property of this transformation, as I wrote in the beginning, is what? t prime square minus x square is equal to t square minus x square. I wrote this in four dimensions. I write this c t prime square minus x prime square minus y prime square minus z square. And that is equal to c t square minus x square minus y square minus z square. Yes, that's okay. So this should be prime. Indeed, if you take this and put it there, you will see that that is satisfying that rule. So let me do and uh, then we can stop. So basically, you have the t prime. So again, take the all c's is one. Oh, t prime square minus x prime square is equal to t square minus x square. And if you take the t prime square, that will be what? t square v square x square minus 2 vx divided by square of 1 minus v square, that is 1 minus v square, sorry, uh, minus x prime square, what is the x prime square over there? That is equal to x square v square t square minus 2 vx divided by 1 minus v square. So this is t prime square, this is x prime square, and I think this is cancelling. And the, if you take the x square parenthesis of this, you will get x square, x square parenthesis of what? v square minus 1, x square parenthesis of v square minus 1. And if you take the t square parenthesis, and you should have minus t square uh, t minus t square, v square minus 1, I think. So I have a mistake, I think, here. So we can check this. So I think these are canceled. And you will get the, you know, no, yes, yes, that's OK. This will be minus sign, and you will obtain uh, t square minus x square. OK. So this Lorentz transformation is satisfying that the uh, speed of light is the same in all different inertial observers. And this kind of transformation is called the hyperbolic transformation also. So what is happening? In the ro you, you know that this rotation, but in that case, what happens? Uh, the frames bend it towards to the what? Uh, speed of light. This is the x equal to t, 45 degree. And actually, this angle and this angle is the same. OK. So if you go very high speeds, what is the form? This should be bent to the, if you have high, low speeds, this is, if there's no speed, 90 degrees. But if you get higher and higher, 
So this coordinates with band along to the what? X equal to T with the same angle. Now we are ready to start what we are going to do. So let us give a break. <laughs>